entrepreneurs, business owners, professionals who seek excellence, bringing the business classroom to you. It's the Business Builder Show. Here's Marty Wolf. We still got it. Welcome to the Business Builder Show with Marty Wolf and today with our guest host, J. Kelly Hoey. Along with Kelly and our executive producer, D.C. Taylor, we will be your guys on this learning journey. To learn more about Kelly, check out her website at jkellyhoey.co. That's jkellyhoey.co. Okay, Kelly, let's get the conversation going. Thanks, Marty. This is Kelly Hoey, guest host of the Business Builder Show, and I am beyond thrilled to have Kate White, best-selling author, former editor of Cosmo, speaker, and so much more back on the show. Thanks for coming back, Kate. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Thanks for inviting me back. All right. Let's start off with talking about your new book, Such a Perfect Wife. Um, But no, don't give anything away. Uh, The premise of the book is, of course, freaking me right out. And I know that you're a nice person. How you write this stuff is beyond me. But anyway, for people who have not picked up Such a Perfect Wife, tell us about it. It's a combination of thriller and whodunit about a true crime reporter who heads up to Lake George, New York, to cover for a website called Crime Beat the disappearance of a wife and mother named Shannon Blaine. And as we know, because we these headlines seem to pop up so often, when a mother and wife disappears, the husband is often the primary suspect. But I want to play with the idea of, wait, what if there are other suspects? What if maybe the husband didn't do it? So the true crime reporter, Bailey Wagons, has to peel away layers on assignment and try to uncover the truth. And the truth can be pretty grisly, as we know, in certain cases. And and unfortunately, it is in this case. Oh, wow. All right. As I'm saying, it's, it's, I've got a big trip coming up in July, so I have a suitcase that I'm already packing my reading in. So a, such a perfect wife is going with me to France. So there we are. Um, but I know Marty's already picked it up. Yeah. Got any, uh, got any, got any uh, you know, I'm ideas already, yet? I'm worried sick. I, I am. I'm really, I, I'm really concerned for Shannon's well being, you know, and so I know, be. I, I know, be. I should be, huh? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep reading then. I'll keep reading. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, Kate, you're just back from, uh, or recently back from your, your place in Uruguay. Um, and I know you weren't just sitting down there, you know, enjoying the sights and sounds and food and all the rest of it. Um, what have you been up to? And, and knowing you were having a book coming out, um, give us a little kind of behind the scenes, uh, you know, what you've been working on with respect to the launch of Such a Perfect Wife. Oh, that, that's such a good question. And you don't usually get asked that as an author, but there's a lot of stuff you've got to do besides writing the stupid thing. <laughs> you have to work with the production department, read the manuscript a number of times to make sure there aren't any errors. You have to work on a cover and pray that you got a good cover. I love this cover that they did this time. It's one of my favorites. You you work on the marketing too. And today with social media, as you well know, Kelly, that's a real opportunity for you to get your message out there. You, you've just, you, there's just so much that you have to do now as an author. Then there's the tour and even preparing the different talks you give on the tour. And what a lot of people aren't aware of, it, particularly if you're a mystery writer, when you are doing the marketing for the current book, if you're on a year contract, yearly contract like I am, you are writing the next book. And I just handed in uh, the book for next year, and I'm going to do a few little tweaks from my editor, and then I'm going to start the next one. So it's it's a lot of plate spinning, I guess you could say. So Kate, I want to go two places on that on that answer. Um, the first is, um, you know, are there marketing tactics. You mentioned social media marketing tactics that you're you know, that you're using now than when you first wrote, or is there still, you know, your first mystery came out, or is there still stuff that you find like, you know, like a book tour uh, and going to local bookstores that's like in terms of what works to sell this product, this new book? 
Oh, that, that's a great question, too. There are a few things that I did when I started back in 2001 writing mysteries that are the same, like going to bookstores. And there was a period where that kind of dipped. But that seems to be back again. And it's great to meet readers. Um, I just got an email on my website uh, from someone who was at a talk Friday night in Doylestown bookstore that I did. And it was just great. The guy said, hey, loved your talk, loved being there. And it, and he said, thanks for what you wrote in the book. And it was just a, a really nice thing to hear. But of course, social media has changed everything and the ability to market digitally. And beyond social media, it's just having a huge newsletter. I have over 30,000 uh, people uh, read my newsletter every month and you can connect with some of them as uh, kind of super fans too. You send advanced books to. So it's really so different than it was all those years ago. Yeah. Just sort of all, but all the things you need to do all the time. Then now from your uh, answer, but sort of behind the publication of the book, the other thing, knowing that you are on contract to write books every year, where the heck do you get your ideas from? And how do you like kind of keep that idea machine flowing? Um, you know, I know there's a discipline with writing, but talk oh. a little bit about the get where you get those where do you get your where do you get your creepy ideas, Kate? Well, they are creepy and you got to have them, Kelly, because the panic would be starting a new one and not having anything and just feeling you're starting cold. My stepson when he was uh, sent me a cute um, digital Mother's Day card the other day, he said, Kate, how do you, do you do that? The exact question you asked, aren't you nervous starting a new book without an idea? But I try to get the idea about six months in advance while I'm finishing up the other, just so I know I have it. And a lot of it is starting with just a germ, something, a headline you hear. I subscribe to some true crime websites. I also sometimes even hear overhear something interesting in a hotel lobby in case, you know, sometimes hotel managers wonder why I'm hanging in their lobbies because I'm trying to get ideas for my books. And then what you do generally is you play the game of what if. And I've heard a lot of fiction writers say this. You, you say, OK, what if this happens and what if that happens? And all of a sudden you're, you're on a roll. You're running with something. And. It may have been something as simply, simple as the word twins. Seeing that made you think, what if two twins got separated? What if this? What if that? And you keep going. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. I want to flip topics completely um, because uh, I'm going to say writing, uh, mystery, and suspense, crime, creepy novels. I'm just going to keep saying that because uh, you, you just hit such a chill bone for me with, with um, the premise of your latest book that um, this is not your first career. You have reinvented your career um, as has I, as has Marty. Um, so for those who are listening to the show today who may be stuck and lacking motivation and need a little prod or encouragement to reinvent themselves, some great Kate White guidance you can provide. Well, first, let me just say thanks, Kelly, for saying my ideas are creepy because that's the highest form of flattery. You could <laughs> give somebody my role. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, two quick pieces of advice because reinvention was a fabulous opportunity for me as I saw my the business I was in beginning to uh, go off the rails. That was the magazine business. I would say you have to get off your butt that there's there's this idea that you're going to come up with your reinvention plan by talking to people or thinking about it or jotting notes in a moleskin notebook but the way you figure out what you want to do is barbara corson corcoran said you don't know what your passion is till you walk into it so you've got to be out there you've got to be exploring, talking to people, taking classes, volunteering, going to lectures, doing more volunteering, and really expose yourself. The other thing that helped me, and I might have even talked about this before on the show, is that I tend to get overwhelmed and 
back away and procrastinate. So sometimes it's good just to get think of that first step and 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 slice things down, thin slice them. And I started writing my mysteries by only writing 15 minutes a day because I was afraid if I told myself I'm going to start be, being a writer, I'm going to start using Saturday and Sunday mornings to do it. Besides the fact that I had two kids, I. I knew I wouldn't be able to do that. So I started with only 15 minutes a day. And I knew that wasn't too big of a chunk for me to handle. That's, that's, that's such great advice. I love that 15 minutes and, and the whole idea of volunteering and, and just trying things. I mean, I remember speaking to one person who sort of reinvented. Uh, she sort of ran toward the thing that everybody else was avoiding. And in that, she found, you know, I'm going to say her her passion and her re- reinvention. Um we often think sort of reinvention of, you know, earlier in, in our careers, but we live in such a time that it can happen at any age. Um, you know, I want to say, what have you learned about the process of reinvention? Well, just that on the other side of frustration or disappointment or failure, in my case, I, I left the magazine business voluntarily, but I felt some dissatisfaction because of where it was going. But on the other side of that, is newness and opportunity and excitement and adventure. So if you if you're feeling restless or frustrated, it's definitely worth exploring because there's good stuff on on the other side. And sometimes it's even tapping into perhaps a, a dream you had as a kid. One one woman I interviewed lately had reinvented herself after being fired, which goes to your point earlier that it can happen at any point in your career, the need to reinvent. She got fired from her sales job and she took a couple weeks just to chill, get her head together. And she started doing a lot of physical activity. And while she was riding her bike, she realized and remembered how much she'd loved bike riding as a girl. And she kind of reconnected with that part of her and from there, she ended up going into the wellness world and now runs a big wellness center. So tap into, this is a good time to tap into some old dream or some so- part of yourself that you, you've you never danced with before that you've left along the sidelines. I love that expression, something you haven't danced with in a while. Like that's, that's absolutely amazing. I had a um, phenomenal experience when I was doing a part of my book tour uh, up in Canada where someone who had been fired uh, and needed to go and reinvent himself. And one of the things I love that he shared was, um, you know, he was given, you know, all the time he needed, as he was told by management to clear out of his office. And he said, I took 15 minutes, Kelly, because, you know, I grabbed for those old enough to remember, he grabbed his Rolodex <laughs> and, and he walked out because he said, if I have my relationships, I can do anything. And then he was going to take the summer off to reflect uh, on sort of what he wanted to do next. And then he would start flipping through his Rolodex and figuring out who to call. Marty. Yes. Thoughts. You do, you coach a lot of people who are, you know, and well, you've done some reinvention. What's your thought? Well, a couple things that went through my mind as you were uh, talking with Kate is there's so much pressure. There's so much written about having a plan and having a clear direction and having goals is that I think people feel guilty <laughs> when they don't and, and uh, that they feel guilty when they just start taking time to I'll use the word discover or to feel their way along. And in the business world, I am, I know that a lot of people are beat to death with the idea of how are you going to scale your business? Well, you know, they may not want to scale their business. It may be a perfect fit for them. Again, that comes from uh, Ian Sanders, really, Kelly, that really yeah. drove that home to me. So I think that the pressure of our fast-paced world might be affecting so much of what is happening to people uh, and is happening to businesses. Oh, that's such a good point. Just, yeah, yeah, love your point about about Ian and, you know, sometimes just being the business of one is the right thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, Kate, you know, it's one of the things I'm thinking too about with reinvention is, and you know this um, so well uh, from the audiences you speak with and who's starting companies, some of this reinvention is about, you know, your attitude of who, who you're going to report to and what your title is going to be. Um, you know, I've already had a boss who's been 20 years younger than I am. Um, and I think that I think that's part of the reinvention sort of ego dynamic we need to need to figure out. 
Yeah, you have to be willing to get rid of some of that old baggage you have, and that baggage may be having a certain title, uh, being the boss, being in control, having the power, and having certain perks. And you're not going to be able to really emerge into the new you if you don't develop a willingness to let go of some of that old baggage or even some of those old, the, the, any grudge you might have about what happened in your old role and just be op- will, willing and open to embrace the new. Yeah, and I was thinking, that's, and thinking about something Marty said, and some of this is, I think, you know, circle back to you being as an author. Where, where are the times we need to be out there in the world and listening to other people and gathering information? And where's the times you just need to quietly sit there and explore, you know, what's going on in your own head um, so that you can, you know, proceed forward? Um, Kate, I'm also thinking about, since you've mentioned it, your past life, your past industry, not one that is, uh, you know, out of trouble yet. So for industries that are rapidly shifting or being disrupted, um, what are your thoughts on what someone needs to do if they're in one of those industries um, in, in, in this turbulent time? Um, what thoughts on people managing their career or business when, you know, everything is, you know, shifting and moving and changing? You have to have your ear close to the ground. And that is a mistake I saw so many people making when I was in magazines not doing that, that you have to understand that your business may be shifting and they're not telling you that. If you went into a glamour magazine a couple of years ago, you probably would have thought it was a vibrant, fabulous place. You would have had no idea. And if you read the New, the New York Times article about the, the woman who took over for Cindy Levy, you would have thought, wow, everything's rosy. And, and then they fold the print edition. They're not going to tell you. So you have to read trade press. You have to listen to earnings reports. You have to listen to buzz and be aware that you may be in a business that's going to shift. And, and though, as Marty said, you don't want this feel pressure to always have a plan. If your business is shifting, you should have some sense of what you're going to do about it. Hmm. Some sense yeah. of what you're going to do about it. I love that thought process. Yeah. That's well, yeah. You know, yeah, keep going, Kate. I, I saw that our business was shifting, and I really encouraged people on my staff to get involved in digital. I introduced a number of people in the articles department to working on the website, too, even though they were siloed at the time. And I would say seven or eight people who work for me, who I introduced to digital, now have big digital careers. Mm. Uh, one of the women on my staff, I encouraged her to start writing fiction. She's She was brilliant. And I gave her a fiction project to do. Uh, that woman is Jessica Knoll, whose first book uh, sold one million copies uh, three years ago. So all those people were willing to pay attention to the fact that, yeah, things are shifting. Maybe I do need a side hustle or a plan B just to protect my butt here. Yeah, or or, or where where is an, an alternate home for the skills that I already have as opposed to a complete, you know, 180 degree, you know, plan B. Um, and I also love that you said, Kate, you know, people who are willing, because I think that's part of it, because someone could listen to this and say, oh, my God, I don't have a boss like Kate White who's looking out for me. You know, it's a two way street. Those a lot of those people could have just looked at you and nodded. Right, exactly. And you, you make a good point, Kelly. It's not about just necessarily leaving your career altogether. It's going down a side path and finding a way to do what you love about that career in a, in a slightly different way, perhaps. And you, you, there aren't always bosses that are going to give you the heads up. So you have to do your own listening and have your own ear to the ground. And that just, it's a smart thing to do because it isn't just the businesses today that we know are changing. There's rumblings under everything today. Right, right. You, you know, sort yeah. of got to be number one with your career. Did you have something there, Marty? Yeah, well, you just said it, basically. You you are responsible for you, no matter what your environment is. Um, as Kate is uh, saying, you know, you are responsible for you and for your family. And you have to take that initiative to go slow or fast. But you have to take that initiative to learn. And, and maybe then you might tap into your old dream, as Kate said. Yeah, no, that's that, that says it all, Marty. Wow. 
Oh, such, such good stuff. Um, Kate, I want to throw in a question I, I, that I have to ask um, before we, I got one more and then before we wrap up this interview today. Um, okay, so you're under contract to write books and how do you stay productive? Well, for me, a big factor was figuring out what my good time was, the good time of the day for me when I seemed to be creative. Because I'm a night owl, I tried writing fiction initially at night, and I just could not get a single word to come out. And finally, I realized, you know what, I think I feel kind of on sometimes in the morning uh, once I've managed to get some caffeine in me. And then I realized, you know what? I've been misled. I might be a night owl, but I'm most productive in the morning. And so what I try to do is hit the desk every day by 8.30, which isn't that early. But I, 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 when I was at Cosmo, I was in earlier, but I feel I have the luxury to be my own boss now. So I, I hit the desk at 8.30 and I, I write through lunchtime. And then in the afternoon, I might use that to do research, social media. And I really try to schedule my day, even though I'm my own boss. And that keeps me in line. I see. That's one of those things I've I said to people um, after writing my book was, you know, find your most, whatever your career is, find your most productive time of the day, like really be in tune with that and then guard that like a hawk. Right, right. And you have to say no, then if you're a morning person, you have to say no when someone says, uh, could we meet for breakfast? I, I turned down almost every breakfast date. Of course, if you know, somebody really good like Obama was calling and asking if I wanted. <laughs> I'd, I'd, lo- I'd love, you, you know, you're, 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 I'm laughing when you say that because I had a book commitment and I got a call from the Canadian consulate in New York to attend a breakfast with Justin Trudeau and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep your commitments, but Kate, you're my hero on that because you know, the, like the, the, again, like you know, guarding your time and saying no and being like, hey, this this is the the time slot and this is how you stay productive and this is how you do these things. Um, Kate, okay, so actually, there's two more questions. Um, one is, where can everybody find you? Well, I'm on katewhite.com and I'm on. Kate White author, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything. And uh, the books are available at stores like Barnes and Noble and independent stores and also, of course, on Amazon. Yes. Well, since we have lots of business owners to listen to this show, you know, support support your fellow business owners, small businesses, <laughs> uh, bookstores, you know, Doylestown, you mentioned they're a wonderful bookstore. Um, so they're lovely there. And there's still some really great independent bookstores, including one in Manhattan that hosted my launch party corner bookstore on Madison Avenue. They're terrific. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. All right. What is next? For Kate White, you've already hinted you got another book, but uh, what's next? Well, you guys have actually been really helpful to talk to. Marty was talking about the pressure of scaling up. And I made a little decision lately where I was trying to balance being out there a lot doing speaking on leadership because I've written a couple of career books and doing the, the mysteries. But they're so different. And I sometimes feel like my brain is the Drake Passage where the Atlantic and Pacific try to equilibrate. <laughs> They're so weird, you know, creepy ideas and leadership. They don't quite mesh. And so I decided that one of the things I was going to do was really scale back on the career talks and really focus mainly on being a mystery writer and a thriller writer. And it, it was a big relief to sort of feel like, okay, I'm, I'm going to pick one lane and kind of stick to it for a while. Amazing. Though, you know, creepy leadership could make for a good horror story. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I've been exposed to it, certainly. Hey, uh, with- okay, Kelly and I have some action on that. If you're going <laughs> to, you know, we want to we want to be part of that. I don't want to be the creepy leader, though. <laughs> oh, those bosses. oh my god yeah you can really have you know next to you know a m- mom out jogging horror uh, line you know creepy boss horror line i tell you the endless amounts of material out there on that on that subject that is so cool kate um in terms of that hey this is this is the one thing i want to be known for and uh 
you know, as always, I'm, you know, probably want to get you back here after you get your next book to bed so we can we can talk about that um, and and that sort of single minded focus uh, and doubling down on just being being a mystery writer. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, um, it's 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 uh, I think one of those things I always advise people step back and look. And sometimes I forget to do that myself. So it was great to get to a place where I kind of step back and, and, and evaluate it. Sometimes following your own vice just sucks. I, you know, I know, I know from experience. <laughs> so I, I, I am reading such a perfect white by our guest Kate White, and uh, I'm only in a chapter two. And like I said at the beginning, I'm a nervous wreck. I'm going to have to finish this today to just get to the end. You know, Marky, I hope you like it. I do. I'll let you know. I love it so far. I love it so far. Great. You're an incredible writer. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Really enjoyed it. Oh, thanks so much, Kate, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. See you, Kate. And, and be aware be, be aware of creepy. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Builders Show. To learn more about me and I'm Marty Wolf, go to MartyWolfBusinessSolutions.com. That's MartyWolfBusinessSolutions.com. To learn more about Kelly Hoey, go to her website, which is jkellyhoey.co. That's jkellyhoey.co. And of course, you can find Kelly and Marty on LinkedIn and Twitter. A reminder, you can find all our Business Builders shows on iTunes, Spotify, and on your favorite podcast app. Bringing the business classroom to you. It's the Business Builders Show with Marty Wolf.